So let's get this party started. We're not going to waste a whole lot of your time today. I know Saturday is one of those days that we definitely have to get some things done. So without further ado, this is where we're going to start this at. Hola, bienvenido esta mañana. Welcome this morning. If you're watching live with me, I'm super excited to have you here and ready to hear some key pointers that may help steer you in the right direction when it comes to learning a language, right? doesn't necessarily even have to be Spanish. It could be any language. These tips are going to transfer over regarding or what the, 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 the language is. So we want to make sure that, you know, we put people on the right path and that's where we're going to go with this today. Um, these tips, I pretty much, I'm pretty 100% sure. You know, and I guarantee that this will work uh, depending on how you implement them. OK, so it's, if you go hard in the paint, 100 percent on implementation of this, you will be in a good situation. All right. So what are we focusing on today? We said that we're going to focus on the 10 most common challenges uh, language learners face when working towards fluency. Right. So we're going to do this in like a countdown style. So I'm going to start with number 10 and Jumping right into this, though, we have number 10 coming in at Amigos Falsos, right? So if you have something to take notes with, okay, I want you to jot these down and I want you to make sure you can refer back to this video. Uh, you can always come back to the video, but why do you need to if you write this down the first time? So let's talk about Amigos Falsos. This is not actually like your fault, your fake friends. That's not what we're talking about. But we are talking about the concept of false friends, right? And so from a grammatical standpoint, that simply means that we're talking about false cognates, okay? Hey, hey, buenos dias, senor, buenos dias, bienvenido. Thank you for joining me, Gangster Lifestyle Experience. So we're talking about false cognates from a grammatical standpoint. So what is a false cognate, right? So a false cognate is a word that looks like it's English equivalent, okay? But it's not the same, it doesn't have the same meaning, okay? That's what we call a false cognate or a false friend or un amigo falso, okay? So let me give you some examples of some false cognates. And I'm gonna type them in the chat so that they can remain there. Here's the first one, embarazada, all right? Embarazada, I'm gonna type that in the chat. I'm gonna pull it up on the screen so you can see it, all right? Embarazada, all right? That's the first one. Right? So if you look at that, and you don't really know Spanish, right? I'm looking at that. That kind of looks to me to be embarrassed, right? However, in Espanol, embarazada is going to be pregnant, okay? All right, so you want to make sure that you are aware of some of those words. We've got another one. I did a short on this one. We've got this word right here. I just thought about it. It came to my mind right now. Uh, it's just we all grown in here, right? We're all grown, so we're gonna we're gonna talk grown stuff, right? So let's look at this one. Preservativo. Okay. I don't know a whole lot of Blade Runner. How you doing, baby? Buenos dias, senor. All right, so preservativo. I'm looking at that word. Hey man, preservative, baby. No. Uh preservativo is gonna be condom. Okay. This is what we mean about false friends or false cognates. It kind of looks like the word, okay, in English. And so it's not that actual word. So our question here is, so how do you learn to recognize these better? Okay, That's the question I pose to you. Like, you might have that question. You might say, hey, man, okay, you just showed me preservativo. I thought that was a preservative. I say, uh, I go out in these these abarrotes or the comados, and I say uh, the tienda de abarrotes or the grocery store. I'm in the, the comado or the, uh, if you live up north, you've got the, uh, what do you call them? The, uh, we've got the the corner bodegas, right? We've got the bodegas. And you're going to, hey, yo necesito un preservativo. Uh, well, I might say, yo necesito uh, pasta or salsa con preservativos, right? I need some salsa with preservatives in it. And the dude's looking at you like, well, you, you want some salsa with some condoms in it? Uh, so we got to know, right? So how the question that's being posed to you is, how do I improve in that area? How do I learn to say, okay, you know what? I got to get better at these false friends or 
recognizing these false cognates. And I'm going to tell you the answer. The answer simply is being able to identify the fact that it's trial and error. It's simply trial and error. Okay. So learning how to identify these simply is something that you have to practice. Okay. It's all about practice. I'm going to move over a little bit here. Wait, wait. I just need to move my body. Move my body. There we go. All right. So it's all about practice, trial and error. Okay. Like literally like what I was doing right there. So we've got to maintain the concept of practice, 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 right? And the repetition of seeing words over and over again, eventually you're going to be like, you know what? I got it. Right. So I'm going to type one more in here while we are getting people coming through. Uh, here's another one that's that's in the chat, but I'm going to bring it up on the screen. We've got mono. You look at that right there. As a beginning Spanish speaker, I'm thinking mono. Okay, man. Boom. Got it. It's just another word for man. Okay. I might know hombre is man. This is just another way to say man, right? No. False cognate. Hand. So can I, let me ask you this. Do you know of a way? Okay, you might say, hey, profe, well, how can I get a list of all these? Between searching for, and I'm going to eventually create a video on that, but literally you can go into Google, you can go into YouTube, you can say, hey, man, show me a list of false cognates in Spanish uh, or false cognates in English, okay? And it will develop. Some people have a list of 500, you know, if that's what you want. So it's, it's easily attainable to find a list to kind of review and study like you used to do back in the day when you had to do vocabulary tests in, in, in elementary and middle, middle school or high school. So just kind of look over them and continue to uh, have practice and repetition with them. And then eventually you'll pick up on knowing, oh, that's a false cognitive. You'll be able to rec recognize it with no problem. Let's keep moving here. Okay, so the next one we have coming in at number nine. We've got gender in articles. Okay, so this is something that is super rare for us in English. Okay, because we don't we don't deal with we don't deal with um, having the issue of nouns and adjectives having gender. Right, we don't have that that issue. So we want to make sure that we understand that. Hey, man. I don't always understand what the heck you're talking about when you say gender and articles. So basically what we want to make sure we understand is this nouns in all romance languages have gender and the, what we call the infamous articles, definite and indefinite articles. Does that even matter? No. My biggest question for a lot of people when I ask them to say, you know, what do you do to remember the, the gender of an item or which article should you use? Should you use L? Should you use La? Should you use Los? And should you use Las? When do, how do you know when to use those? And I dare to ask, is it even important? Is it even important to, to know those in the beginning stages? In the beginning stages of learning a language, do you have to know these? OK, I would say, no, you actually don't have to. All right. You don't have to. OK, but the important thing is this. There's a rule that you have to live by. OK, there's a rule that you have to live by. And I'm going to put that in the chat here for you. It is and I'm going to put it up on the screen here so that you can jot this down and I'll say it out loud first and then I'll, I'll put it up on the screen here. Always remember to match number and gender. If you've been working with me on the community posts that I'm trying to get better at and, and put these out on a daily basis to help people kind of, you know, if, even if you don't hit the, you know, uh, Duolingo's or the, you know, Rosetta Stones or whatever these apps that people use, um, if you do happen to come in, at, in there um, for the community posts at like 8 a.m., Eastern Standard Time, and I think we do another one at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I am starting to give you some items that will help you kind of put you on the right track to remembering some things. So the rule that I always go by or the little saying that I use is always remember to match number and gender. So what do I mean by that? Right. So, for example, we we, we had a picture 
Um, we had a picture this week in the community post where we talked about the color of a guy's shirt. And I asked, hey, man, uh color es su camisa, right? So what's the color of his shirt? And their two choices were red, pero en español. But people didn't realize, okay, man, I know rojo is the answer. Like, that's what I learned in school was the color rojo, right? And then the other option was roja. But the actual answer was roja, okay? The actual answer was roja. And people say, well, it ends in an A. It's a guy with a shirt on. It should have been rojo. But see, that's the concept that we don't really worry about or understand in English because we don't have gender. And people think, oh, guy, gender. When they hear that, they think guy, girl type situation, right? And so I'm going to just simply say guy, man, oh. That's kind of what we remember from Spanish, right? But we have to remember it's not about the person wearing the item. OK, it's not about the person wearing the item. It's about the item. Right. So we're always having to remember to match the gender of the item with what they're wearing in respect to clothing. OK, so the actual item was a una camisa, a shirt. OK, it was una camisa. Right. So camisa is una palabra femenina. All right. It's a feminine word. Gender is la camisa. So if it's la camisa, it can't be rojo. We can't say la camisa rojo. We've got to say la camisa roja. Always remember to match the number and the gender. We're talking about one shirt, la camisa, right? Una camisa, la camisa, the shirt. So we've got to match the gender, which would have been use the A ending if the color ends in O or A, right? So that's coming in at number nine. People are like, hey, man, this gender and article is really not that difficult. Okay, once you get a grasp on it, you just simply learn, you know, which words are masculine, which words are feminine. Is there a way, like a secret to learning that? No, it's called repetition. Okay. All of this uh, language learning is is based upon like a repetition, right? So you get you a series of five to 10 words. Let's just say get a series of five to 10 words and work with those words two to three days. And you work on saying the word in English and then saying it in Spanish. But the difference is we don't say the shirt all the time. We just say shirt. Pants, shoes, whatever, right? Pero en español tenemos que decir, we have to say in Spanish, la camisa, los pantalones, right? La radio, right? La mano, el agua. You have to match them because there's a lot of times where you're not going to necessarily be able to figure out the adjective that you need to go with it because you don't remember the article, the el, the la, the los, or the la. So make sure you say the whole word out okay don't take a shortcut if you're starting out at the beginning i always say learn i always relate it to what we did in elementary school right we talked about learning division right you learn how to do math right and so all right cool appreciate you blade runner i appreciate that um the yeah i try to i'm trying to help these help the people out baby and i feel like those quizzes you know it's gonna help you pop up and do some some things correctly but i always think about long division right so when we were learning division in elementary school they didn't tell us hey man let's learn the short division then i'm gonna go back and teach you long division right that's not the way we learn division we learned the long division and then they went back and showed us how to do short division right so you've got to understand it's the same concept when it comes to learning the gender and the, the articles that associate with some of these nouns and these adjectives. You want to make sure you say, hey, man, el libro, la película, right? Long division. As you get better, as it continues to flow, then you start dropping them off. OK, so key thing, first and foremost, take the long route in the beginning. It'll help you out in, in the very end and always remember to match number and gender. Okay, so let's move along here. We're going to number eight, right? Number eight, because we're not going to keep you here long. Some people might have to mow the lawn. Hopefully you did that if you're on the East Coast because it's going to get a little warm, right? All right, so informal, informal, coming in at number eight, right? This is a thing that not everybody quite understands because it's not a thing that we really do in the, the in the English language. We don't have a separation between the words um, or the way we we conjugate verbs. There's it's not a specific way when we're talking to a particular person, right? So knowing the use of when to use to versus usted, and they both mean you, but we've got to know when to use which one, right? And so these are what we call social constructs in Espanol, right? So we have to determine when do I use the 
two, and when do I use usted? Or when do I use vos? And when do I use usted? Depending on what type of Spanish you're working with, right? And it's not really tricky, but it can be confusing if you don't have a, a foundation built to help you determine when to use these, right? So there's three key ways to remember these, okay? Three key ways. I'm going to drop that knowledge right here for you. So make sure you got a pen and paper. And I'm also going to put in the links in the description below to help you realize that, hey, man, if I work on this, I can actually get it. There's going to be a link to a video what we did, two versus usted. Um, there's a video that I've done on that. You can check that out. It'll help you as well. But quickly, the ways to remember the differences between when to use do and when to use usted. If I'm talking to someone I know, okay, they are familiar to me. All right. That's when I'm going to use do, right? If it's somebody younger than me, okay, I'm going to use do. If it's a family member or a longtime friend or a friend in general um, or a colleague, I'm going to use the two form of the verb. OK, I'm going to use the two form of the verb. Now, if we're talking about in a formal situation, when do I use um, usted? OK, when do I use the formal you? So what we want to take a look at this is I am using usted when I'm talking to someone I've never met in my life. First time, right? I always use the example of like the cashier at Target or Walmart, okay? Um, chances are, you know, I'm not going to know that person. So when I ask them, how are you? Como esta? Right? Or como esta usted? If I take the long division route, okay? And if I'm talking to an older person, okay? If I'm talking to an older person, I'm going to use the usted format. OK. And then the last situation is if I'm talking to somebody that is in a respectful position in the community. All right. A pastor, a pre, a, you know, a lawyer, the president of a company, I'm going to use a formal usted. All right. So that's what we mean by determining when to use the informal versus the formal. Those are the situations. That's it in a bucket. OK. So all you need to know is those three situations for each one. OK. And uh, like I said, I'll drop the link to the video in the description so that you can check that out. Now, if you're joining us here, you're just coming in a little later and you're watching this on the replay, perhaps. Welcome, bienvenidos. Soy Profe Don Omar. And on this channel, I focus on teaching you Spanish in the simplest delivery possible, yet super effective, right? So as a Spanish language educator, like with over 20 years of experience, I wasn't always fluent. Like, I'm going to be straight up 100 with I wasn't always fluent in this thing, right? I kind of jumped on it a little earlier than most people. Uh, that goes back to like 1987. Uh, I'm going to tell you my motivation because everybody's got to have a motivation to learn this thing, right? Just can't be like, hey, man, I think I want to learn Spanish today. Uh, no, it's got you got to have a drive. What's your drive? What's your why? I did a little video on that as well. I'll drop that link. But you've got to find the motivation for you. So my motivation was in 1986 was the movie The Three Amigos, okay? And if you were a young man growing up watching The Three Amigos, like myself, I'd never seen anything like it before. But at the end, when Steve Martin and Chevy Chase and uh, Martin Short were getting ready to lead the, the Pueblo, right? The young ladies came out and, you know, they said, hasta luego, Ned, and Nos vemos. And I was, I was like, what are they, who, who, what are they speaking? This is like third grade. And I was tripped up. Like, so it did the, there was a, a young lady out there when I'm ahead with like some light brown eyes and came out there in a un vestido blanco, a white dress. And she said, you know, hasta luego to Steve Martin. And I was like, oh man, gotta learn this, right? That was the thing. That was the thing for me. That was my motivation. I mean, you know, third grade, nine years old. Hey man, you know, whatever. Uh, but from that point, on, I was like, man, you know what? I'm going to learn the Spanish thing. Now, granted, you know, how much can you teach yourself in third grade? Not a lot. Right. So uh, I had to do some 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 soul searching and figure out some ways to do that as I got older. Right. So. Like I said, I, I had to learn just like everybody else did. I was in junior high taking a Spanish one class. You know, I was in high school. I took all my Spanish in high school. But. Did it matter, really? Because I could I jump out here in the streets and have a conversation? No, not gonna lie. I could do some basics, you know, but having a full blown conversation? No. Went through college, majored with a concentration in Spanish. Quite honestly, I don't believe that I was fluent. So 
I had to continue to do some additional work, okay? And it takes work. This is not something that's just going to happen overnight. Now, I'm not telling you it's going to take you 15 years, right? Because it doesn't take 15 years. I studied for maybe 15, 16 years, okay? But the actual time frame and when I became fluent, okay, happened a little later. And it happened in a short amount of time. For me, it only took about two, three weeks. Why? But because I had that whole background of years behind me, right? So it's not going to happen for, for everybody. It took, it took me about man, two to four weeks in that range. I don't know when it clicked and happened, but it was in that two to four weeks range, right? And I'll tell you why in a second here. But, you know, I left out of school like, yeah, I'm good. I can hold that combo. You know, only to bomb severely in many situations, never being able to be completely fluent until I took matters into my own hand and actually studied abroad. Now, everybody can't do that, but I had the option to do so. And that's why I mean it took me only two to four weeks because I was engaged in conversation on a daily basis. I was immersed. Right. That's what they talk about being immersed in immersion situations. That was my immersion situation. I was studying abroad in Mexico and then I eventually it clicked for me between that two to four week range, and then I was good to go. That can happen for everybody. So what am I doing here? I'm trying to help you learn how to either domestically immerse yourself, okay? And I talk about that in my ebook that I wrote, How to Domestically Immerse Yourself in the Language. And so that's what I have right here, just to give you some insight on this. Um, this is the ebook that I have like eight key strategies that are going to help you to become a better Spanish speaker. OK, so no matter what level you're on, these, these strategies right here are going to like help you propel yourself to become influent that much faster. Why? Because these are the steps and the strategies that I use to get there. Now, granted, like I said, it's not going to happen two to four weeks. I'm not that guy. I'm not going to be on YouTube telling you, hey, man, 30 days, you can be fluent. No, you got to have some background knowledge. They're not telling you all that. They just say, hey, man, it only took me four weeks or took me 90 days or three they didn't tell you it took, you know, six or seven years prior to that studying Spanish. They were in Spanish one, two, three. They're not telling you all that. So don't believe the hype when people are say, oh, man, you know, you can be fluent in 30 days or 90 days. Nah, bro. But I can give you some strategies to help you become a better Spanish speaker. And so that's what I have right here. It's available on Amazon. I'm going to drop the link in the chat and as well. It will be in the description below. But uh, it definitely will help you out. Super economical in price. So you can check that out as well. If you follow it to a T, I'm pretty sure to put you on the right path to becoming fluent. So I'll drop that for you momentary, momentarily. All right. So let's get back into this thing, babe. We're on what? Numero siete. Numero siete, right? Let's take a look here. So numero siete, we're talking about vocabulary building. This is one of the top 10 most common challenges that people have is vocabulary building, okay? Vocabulary building. How do I get better at my vocabulary here, okay? How do I get better at that? And so what we want to make sure is, okay, what am I doing to get better at building my vocabulary? What am I doing? Am I using, you know, uh, Duolingo? Okay. Am I using, you know, Busu? Am I using Pils, Pils, what is it called? Pilmser, Pimsler, right? You know, Rosetta Stone. What are you using to become better at your vocabulary? All those are great. All those are great. And I definitely say, hey, man, continue to use them, you know, continue to use them. Here's the uh, so but you have to have a schedule. You've got to be able to work that out where you are doing um, your vocabulary building on a daily basis. It's got to be a daily basis. All right. Uh, make sure you are doing that. And I guarantee you if you're doing it and it only takes about 10 10 minutes a day, literally, that's all you have to do is 10 minutes a day, right? 10 minutes a day, make sure you're hitting your vocabulary up daily. It's got to be a daily basis. It does not have to be a long time, all right? It does not have to be a long time, but you definitely want to make sure that you are um, that you are building on that vocabulary. That's the secret. Make sure you're on a schedule, okay? So make sure on a schedule. Um I would even dare to say, don't solely rely on the language apps, though. Okay, that should not be your only way to build your vocabulary. 
right? So, and as I, I discuss in the book, there's a section that I talk about where you can work on your strategies or how I can build the vocabulary. Some people have their own strategies on how they build their vocabulary, okay? Um, one for me, even when I was coming up, I, or I was trying to improve my vocabulary, reading, reading, right? They tell you that anyway when we're learning English, right? Hey, man, make sure you read, right? Develop a love for reading, right? Well, what if I hate reading, man? I just want to look at pictures, right? If you just want to look at pictures, fine. Get you a thing of pictures. Practice. Take take the caption. Put a caption on the picture. And go through those bad boys like flashcards, right? Using the, the Quizlet.com, right? If you use that, Quizlet.com, right? Um, you can develop. There's some other apps that you can develop your own um flashcard sets okay making your own flashcards if you need to that's one option tagging your house with the items in your house that's another way right um speaking out loud and saying oh esta es una camisa oh esta es una esta es un flor right whatever i'm whatever i'm looking at you want to say those words out loud. That's going to help build your vocabulary. I want to look at, okay, so I might say, man, I'm looking at, I'm in the kitchen. I'm like, okay, fork, knife, spoon. Build your vocabulary there. Use real life situations to help build your vocabulary, okay? That also is a, a game changer, using your real life experiences. Hey, como esta señora explore, explore equipo? Bienvenidos. Thank you for pulling up. Thank you for pulling up, my guy. Good stuff. Um, I remember you said you're going to have a little time there. So we're on right now. We're just doing the vocabulary building. This is top. We're doing the top 10 most common challenges that language learners face. We're on number seven. Let's go ahead and move to number six. Lack of practice. We were just talking about building your schedule, right? Lack of practice. And having a lack of practice is probably the biggest, the biggest hurdle. It's the biggest hurdle the, that, that we have to accomplish in order to become fluent, okay? It's the, it's about the amount of practice we, we, we put in, right? And you're only going to get out of it what you put into it, correct? That's anything in life, right? Right? So what is it that you have to do? Finding the opportunities to practice speaking and immerse yourself in the language can be difficult, especially for those not in a Spanish-speaking country. So if you're somebody like an expat or, you know, you're, you're actually living overseas, there's really no excuse. You you know, you just got to get out there and have conversations with random people. I like to think of it as this. When I'm overseas and I know, well, if I'm not living over there, I'm visiting. But if I were an expat, I'm going to be there. I've got to start developing these relationships with the people in my community. So why not start having these conversations and practicing some of the phrases that I've been seeing in some of Profe Don Omar's videos, right? I'm going to go out here. Man, let me see if this phrase really works that Profe told me. And you go out there and you might hit them with, como has estado? And they're like, oh, this guy's advanced with his questions. How have you been? Right? They're like, oh, man, who is this guy? So learning to use those and put them into repetition use what you know on a daily basis as much as you possibly can okay that is one of the things that you want to do um develop a schedule when are you going to practice okay how are you going to implement the strategy of domestic immersion once again I talk about that in the A strategies, learning how to do domestic immersion. How are you going to implement that on a daily basis? And it's something that must be done. Practice must be done on a daily basis. Is there a time frame? The time frame, it depends upon the person, okay? Depends upon the person. It could be 10 minutes a day, at least 10 minutes a day, okay? Because that's 70 minutes a week. That's pretty good. Now, the, the, the time frame in which you will become fluent is going to be a further further out, right? It's going to be further out. But you're going to get there eventually if you stay consistent, okay? Um, what is 30 minutes a day, right? What is that? 210 minutes a week. Not bad. Bump that bad boy up to 60 a day. Now we're talking. You're moving now, okay? So it's all about finding and out 60 minutes a day. OK, check this out. How do I study Spanish 60 minutes a day? Do I sit down and study it all in this one 60 minute setting? Not me. I got grown people with ADHD. Not going to happen. 
Okay, that's just not gonna happen with me. Sixty minutes sitting somewhere trying to do so. No, right? Unless I'm working out. That's the only thing. Can you learn Spanish while working out? Uh oh. Come on now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Incorporate it into your daily routine. That's how you get above and beyond that much faster. Okay. Learn to do that. That's going to be simple. Okay. Let's move at number five. Coming in at number five. No, wait. Why is number six of it? Oh, that was going backwards. Okay. Here we go. Number five. All right. The subjunctive move. Now, we, now we're getting into the trenches. Okay. Now, you might look at this. <laughs> what you talking about, profe? The subjunctive move. El modo subjuntivo. Right. What is that? First and foremost, people are like, man, what, what are you talking about right here? You don't even, we don't even talk about this that much in English, right? We don't talk about this at all, pretty much, growing up in English class. But this is, a, we have two moods, okay? There's the indicative mood, and then you've got what we have here, which is the subjunctive mood. The indicative mood is what we normally speak in on a majority of the time, like a 80%, 85% basis. We're talking in factual statements and questions, okay? The subjunctive mood is that gray area I like to call. It. It's a what if situation, right? When you get into those what ifs and I said it, but that person might not do it type situation, okay? I would like for you to go over there. That's subjunctive, right? I might want it, but that person might not want to do it. Those are subjunct. That's what we mean by subjunctive mood. So in Espanol, this is super, super huge, right? Is it complex? It can be. But you've got to have certain parameters in place or certain acronyms that will help you or mnemonic devices. And I have one. We call it You Weirdos, right? We'll be talking about that in our, our private classes here on the channel coming up in July, okay? And I'll tell people about that coming up soon. I'll, I'll let you know how we're going to do that because we're going to kind of gear these types of lives to helping people develop a game plan, right? We want to give you a game plan. And so when we get into stuff like this, this is highly, highly um, complex if you want to dive into it, but it doesn't have to be. And so it's going to take some time for us to sit down and, and mesh this thing out. So those live streams will be a lot longer, especially for this, especially to help people, you know, learn how to do that. So we'll be doing that coming up in not this particular one, but. Those concepts that are kind of challenging, we're going to start doing those in July um, as a, a members group situation. OK, so learning the subjunctive mood, it's all about being able to speak in a what if gray area situation. Um, like I said, you can you can always search, you know, YouTube for people to try to explain it might not sound the best way, you know, but pull up. When we talk about you weirdos, I will break that down for you. Um, but it's always just knowing the subjunctive mood is like that gray area, that what if situation. OK, um, coming in at number four. All right. Verb conjugation. Verb conjugation is really one of those situations where I know people are like, man, look, man. The yo forms in an O. It's pretty much all I got for you. Right. Verb conjugations can be rough. They can be rough. But I'm here to tell you it does not have to be right. Spanish verbs change according to the tense, the mood and the person that is doing the action. Right. We do that in English as well. But this complexity, especially like with irregular verbs, can be overwhelming for beginners. So when we say irregular verbs, right, we're talking about things like if I have the verb, I don't know, let's go with, okay, ser, right? Basic verb, ser. When we conjugate normal verbs like hablar, right? We take the verb hablar, the yo form would be hablo. But if we take the yo form of ser, it's soy. That looks nothing like ser. That's what we call a regular. And there's repetition in the situation of being able to identify these irregular verbs. It's just an over and over, get a list of them. You can type in, hey, man, give me a list, a top 10 list of irregular verbs. And the internet will give you that in some form or way. 
And you just study the irregularities that come with that verb on a daily basis. Learn how to use it in a sentence. Learn how to use that particular verb in a sentence. And after a while, you'll get used to that those conjugations in your mind according to who the subject is. So being able to have some repetition, right, with your conjugating, that's going to be something very, very huge, right? So the, the nuanced and almost unfathomable concept be, uh, of conjugation is it's not always addressed properly, but we've done some, some classes on conjugating in here. Uh, they are in the form of the previous live stream. So you can definitely go back and check those out. But we don't normally do that, that whole verb conjugation. We do it in our heads in English, right? And we, we do, it's not a deep process for us. It's going to be different because you're having to put together these things based on who you're learning the subject pronouns, right? You've got to learn the endings for AR verbs, ER verbs, IR verbs, right? We At least we have that breakdown in Spanish. We don't have that in English. You just got to know. You got to know, right? It's a little bit more difficult in English. That's why people say English is harder to learn. Uh, but in Spanish, at least we know, hey, AR verbs, what are the endings? ER verbs, what are the endings? IR verbs, what are the endings? All right. Know your subject pronouns. Know when I'm talking about one person, that's going to be el, ella, usted. When I'm talking about two people, it's going to be ellos, ellas, o ustedes. When I'm including myself in a group of people, that's nosotros. When I'm talking to you directly, that's going to be two. When I'm talking about myself, it's going to be yo. Those are the things that you have to practice at the beginning. Then you start the conjugation, right? You start working on that. How do you perfect this? That's my question to you. How do you perfect verb conjugation? Okay. Repetition and exploratory practice is key. What do I mean by repetition and exploratory practice is key? You've got to realize this. If I, exploratory practice, I, I want to talk about that XL Pro. Buenos dias, senor. Bienvenidos. Exploratory practice. It's like exploratory surgery, right? When you get out here in these Spanish-speaking streets, you've got to explore using your Spanish. A lot of people have a lot of anxiety buildup when it comes to speaking Spanish and with people that are native speakers. Do they live with you, right? Do they pay you your check to go to work? It's just practice. What? What? Did, I, Alan Iverson said it best, baby. We're talking about practice. Practice. That's all we talk about, practice. We're not talking about a game, right? He said it. It's the same thing when it comes to this verb conjugation. Practice. That's all we're talking about. It's not, it's not even a big deal. According to AI, it's not a big deal. It's just practice. And that holds true with verb conjugation. It's just practice, baby. So get out there and practice. Learn how to use it. And I said this in a short, and somebody commented on the short, which is crazy because I did it like last year, it felt like, or yeah, it was like last summer, but somebody just watched it. And what was crazy was in that short that I, I put out, you've got to realize that the anxiety is the biggest hangup. You are your worst enemy, right? That's what they always tell us. So what do we have to do? We've got to anticipate what it is that we want to say. So conjugate that thing in the head, right? All right, this is what I want to say. Boom, boom, boom. I want to, I like pizza, right? I want to be able to say that. I got to know me who's that pizza, right? Okay, so I have $2. Tango. Yeah. Tango dos dollars. All right, so I'm putting it together. Put it together in your head before you say it out loud. Now, granted, you might see, man, somebody's going to think I'm slow, man. You are. This is not your language. It's, you got to start somewhere, right? So before you can get faster, you got to start at being slow. You got to crawl. Come on now. Stay with me. Not here to preach. It's Saturday, not Sunday, right? So let's keep this thing going, baby. Numero tres. All right. Sentence structure. Oh, baby. These things, like, like, we've gone like the last two go hand in hand, right? How to, con how to conjugate the verb. How to conjugate the verb, right? And then from how to conjugate the verb into sentence structure. How do I take that verb and put it into una oración o una frase? How do I put it in a phrase? Okay. Oh, I just thought another strategy. This is a bonus one. Check this out. Feel me on this one. Learning to use Spanglish. 
Let me know in the let me know in the comment section if that's you. And if if you're finding value in what we're talking about here today, make sure you give a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you share this bad boy out with your people. All right, take the link and put it to them. They can watch the replay. But Spanglish, do you practice speaking Spanglish? Should you practice speaking Spanglish? Can Spanglish propel me to Spanish? Let me know in the, let me know in the chat. Let me know in the chat here. Should I be using Spanglish? Well, let me ask you this. We're, all these are rhetorical, of course. I want you to answer them for yourself. But if I want to speak Spanish, but all I'm doing is listening and speaking and talking to people in English, how is that helping me learn Spanish? Right? But if I'm using Spanglish, and what I, what I just did, right, when in that sentence, I was talking about, you know, how do I take, you know, the verbs in the, in the verb conjugations and put them into una oración o una frase? That's Spanglish. I just took the English and the Spanish and I fused it, right? Is a fusion better than no fusion? Let's think about that, right? Some people would say, oh, man, that's Spanglish. It's better than not knowing any Spanish at all. So you might want to take that into consideration there, okay? So sentence structure, let's jump on this. The structure of sentences can be different in English, right? The way we set those sentences up in English is not the same way that we set them up in Espanol. Por ejemplo, right? if we think about this, the way we talk about the red house or the blue car or, you know, the big buildings, right? We put our adjectives before our nouns, right? So in Espanol, we put them on, we put them on the end. Right? We put them behind the noun. So that's what we mean about the structure of the sentence not necessarily being the same as it is in English, especially in more complex sentences or in questions. Okay, It gets a little more in-depth when you have to learn how to do the sentence structure. But, but is there an easy and effective way, profe, to creating statements and questions? And I would say yes. I would say yes. If you join me for our live, this is probably when we very we started from the bottom. We were we were just young at the game doing live streams. We did a live stream on um, the ICE method, right? The ICE method, and you can find that. I'll I'll see if I can't find that that video and tack it on to this as well. Um, boom! There you go. So. There you go. Exactly, Blade Roman. So the ICE method, if you weren't here in our early stages when we were, you know, a, a newborn in these streets, we developed and I, I came up with something, what we call the ICE method. And if you're joining me on Facebook or LinkedIn, bienvenidos, bienvenidos, bienvenidos. Um, but the ICE method, as you can see right here on the screen, is something that I created like right off the, the top of the dome. All right. The ICE method, identify who your subject is, right? Identify who your subject is, the I, right? Conjugate your verb, okay? That's number two. The E is end your sentence. Boom. I got a sentence, baby. Identify your subject. Who is the person doing the action? Conjugate the verb according to your subject and then end your sentence. I Read the book. Yo leo el libro. Matador. Nos vemos. Right? I'm done. Use the ICE method to help you structure your sentences until you can graduate to the next level. Okay? That's just a simple, a simple little rule that can help you out that with those 10 uh, of our 10 common challenges that a beginner faces or somebody that's learning a language, ICE method. Identify, conjugate your verb in the sentence, okay? Coming in at number two, pronunciation. Oh, boy. This right here, all right, is probably, I, I, I've got it at number two. There's something even, and I'm, I'm going to go to the chat here in a second here. We're going to find out if somebody can tell me what number one is. Uh, if you go, go ahead and do that now while I'm talking about pronunciation. What do you think number one, the number one common challenge for beginners or people learning uh, a language or particularly Spanish here 
Um, and, you know, how is that impeding your navigation to becoming fluent in a language? What's your number one? Put that in the chat while we get ready to pop off on number two here talking about pronunciation, right? Why is this complicated for us, right? What, what? It's because this is not our first language. It does not sound like English. So, and the movements of your mouth are different because of the way the vowels and the words are set up. Spanish has sounds that may not exist in the learner's native language. So what we're saying is if, if English is your first language, <laughs> some sounds, some things that we have to do, some rules we have to know about certain letters in the alphabet, the Spanish alphabet, um, that don't exist in English, okay? Rolling your double R's, right? Knowing when somebody's using a B or a B as in boy and then a V as in very, right? Or Victor. How to determine when somebody, you're in a conversation, like, man, you with that word right there? Is that with a B or a V? Like, help me out. You gotta be able to know the rules of uh, of pronunciation. And so how can we improve and eventually perfect our pronunciation? Well, I'll tell you this. I have always been a firm believer of if you're going to really learn Spanish, okay, you got to start from the bottom, right? You got to start from the bottom with this thing. As an adult, you have to stop from start from the bottom. And the bottom is the alphabet. Got to start there, okay? Now, am I going to sit here and say, hey, man, we're going to do a live stream on learning the Spanish alphabet? No, I'm not going to do that to you. Not going to do that to you. I'm not going to have you sit through a live stream and do that. I would never do that, okay? But I will tell you this. I do have it already on a course, a quick course. Um, and I think it's like, you know, $9.99, right? Something, something simple. And then um, we've got a couple of videos, uh, and I'll drop the link in the description for those as well. I'll put it in the description of this video. But we want to make sure that you learn the pronunciation of about, there's like five letters that you've got to know, right? And I got a video on those five letters, and there's some rules also. Once again, I also talk about this in the eight strategies as well on how to work on your pronunciation but the biggest thing is learning the alphabet okay the spanish alphabet there are some rules with certain letters in the spanish alphabet i talk about that in the course all right and i'll put the link to the course as well below um but learning the alphabet is probably going to help you in the rules that go with it that's going to probably be one of the biggest things that you can accomplish in the beginning okay knowing that if you learn the rules of the alphabet and you learn um, how to pronounce each letter of the alphabet, you are going to be in a great situation. OK, you're going to be in a great situation. And I promise you that is going to put you that much further ahead than anyone else. If you actually start out by uh, checking on the alphabet. And learning the alphabet okay so what i'm looking for right now is a link but i'll look for i'm gonna continue to look for it if not i'm just gonna drop it in the i'm just gonna drop it in the uh chat when i get to it so what are some ways that i can practice my pronunciation okay so i would say voice notes leaving yourself voice notes or saying reading something just take a note a newspaper or a website record yourself in a voice note and do only one a day. You can start with one a day. You can do two a day. I mean, you know, do how many of you want. But essentially what you want to do is you want to have those voice notes. It's like a virtual diary. Oh, man. Keeping a virtual diary of your voice notes. It's like, you know, it's like Spock and Star Trek when they be like, you know, or or uh, what's my man? I just watched a movie, uh, Buzz, Buzz Lightyear. When it was, she was like, dude, why are you always talking to your watch? Why are you, You're the only person that does that. Hey, so what? That's what, but, but, so what? Record yourself doing these voice notes, right? Record yourself doing these voice notes and then see how you progress over a period of time, right? 
see how you progress over, over a period of time. And am I getting better at this? Right? That's the question. You want to so so read things out loud. Okay. Now, some people are like, man, why you, you know, I gotta do that. Hey, hey, you want to get better at it, right? You want to get better at it, that's gonna be the way to do it. So I would say that's one way. Listening also helps with your pronunciation. So, you know, Netflix, Univision, Telemundo, whatever you're watching, Netflix movies, you know, in Spanish. Uh, I would say always go with the authentic versus like a dubbed because you don't always, you know, that, that, that in itself can be a little bit more challenging, but watching, you know, TV shows or movies, listening to the radio, listening to commercials, that's going to help propel your pronunciation, whether you believe it or not. It actually, excuse me, can actually help you. Okay. By listening to somebody say the word correctly. And then I come back and you know what? Oh man, you know what? I know how to pronounce that word now. OK, I know how to pronounce that word because I've heard somebody say this before. OK, I've heard somebody say this before. So that is what I'm going to utilize. OK, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to actually hit you in the chat with everything that we have available. OK, I'm going to put it in the chat and I'm going to uh, have that available for people that are here or, you know, and also the the um, chat will be available there. Um, but this right here gives you a directory of everything I have. It includes the pronunciation stuff, uh, helping you with the alphabet um, so that you don't have to, you know, and there's like some work, some worksheets with it as well. So you can definitely check that out. And um, let me flip that over. You can actually check that out and do the work on your own as far as the practice that goes along with it. So I know there's some activities to help you work on that. Um, there's some strategies in there. It's a live video of me teaching the alphabet. I'm just not going to do a live stream for people out here in YouTube land right now. That's not what you probably want. All right. Coming in at number one. All right. Once again, we want to see what it is. What do you think? What do you think the number one common challenge is for somebody learning Spanish or learning a language? OK, what do you think it is? Put it in the chat. Type it in the comment section if you're watching this on the replay. Okay, we're building up the tense situation right here. Got the drums going, you know. We got the roll, the you know, the give me the drum roll here. Right, we got it. Here it is. Listening comprehension. This is the one. Listening comprehension. Okay, this is the number one challenge. And if I'm right, go ahead and type a one in the chat and hit me with a thumbs up, man. Let me know. Is this the most challenging situation for somebody when it comes to learning a language or learning Spanish? A lot of people would say yes. A lot of people would say yes. The biggest thing here is this. Are there ways to, how, how do I get better? How do I get better with that? Right? Well, yeah. There's the obvious, right? Hey, man, people, you know, people say all the time, hey, man, watch movies, watch TV shows, right? Listen to music. Those are the top three, right? Those are the top three. Have somebody that speaks Spanish with a language partner, right? Top four, top four, top four, right? Okay, cool. But are you comprehending what you're listening to? Depends on the person, all right, and how often they do it. That's going to be, people don't tell you how long that's going to take, but if you don't have a purpose for what you're listening for, come on now, got to have a purpose for what you're listening for to help you comprehend what you're listening to. What is it that I'm listening to today in this movie that I'm trying to comprehend? Am I listening for colors? Am I listening for numbers? Oh, oh, you breaking it down like that, Profe? Yes. How else are you going to learn how to comp comprehend things? I'm just listening to a bunch of words. I have no, word, no idea what these, wor these words are, but I'm going to com comprehend eventually. <laughs> no, you're not. They're not going to tell you the truth. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm going to tell you, you're not going to learn it like that. You've got to say, 
man, on Monday, I'm listening for foods in this, mo this movie or in this particular TV show. I'm listening for weather expressions on Tuesday. On Wednesday, I'm listening for every word that is associated with entertainment, movies, music, book, whatever, right? Make a list. This is a freebie. I'm just dropping this gym out. I'm going to throw this up here. Allie, you, you take it if you want to, all right? Make a list of every day when you get ready to work on your listening comprehension, the topic or the thing that you want to accomplish in that particular day when you go into your listening comprehension practice. Not to mention that there's a couple, there's about three or four, and I'm going to get back on that, but there's like three or four activities on this page right here on Speak Spanish Now where you can go and actually listen to the comprehension activities that I have for you, and then I have some questions that you can actually answer, and then we have the document that you can download and check your answers. So the, the opportunities are endless. That is very true. We know that native speakers speak very fast. We know that Spanish is one of the top three languages as far as rate to listening is super, super high. It's super fast, right? I told a guy one time, he said, man, you know, it's so hard to understand Spanish. You know, they speak so fast. And I said, well, are they speaking too fast or are you listening too slow? You're probably listening too slow. Why? Let me explain what I mean by that. If you are an English speaker, that English is not spoken at the rate that Spanish is. So if I've been listening for 25 years to somebody speak English, and then I jump in the pool with somebody that speaks Spanish, the rate at which I'm listening, is going to be like, it's going to be super fast, right? Because Spanish is slower than English as far as the rate of listening. All right, so you've got to take that into consideration, okay? When you are thinking about this listening comprehension thing, you've got to learn how to speed it up. And the only way to speed it up is, yes, I'm listening to the reggaeton, right? I'm listening to the, the weather reports on Telemundo and Univision. I'm watching the, you know, novelas, right? Use that. It's going to eventually, as I said, that theme, you put those themes together for the days of the week. Hey, Monday, I'm doing this Tuesday. Tuesday. If you're listening, boom, oh, caught it, right? And then you start combining, uh-oh, come on. Then you start combining your topics, okay? Now, today, I'm listening for weather expressions and names of, you know, uh, I don't know, colors, right? You're looking at, you're listening for those two things, right? A couple of weeks go by. Then I'm doing three topics. A couple of weeks go by. Now, I'm doing four. You see where I'm going with this? You see how you improve your listening comprehension? How many people out here out there have told you that's how you do it? You don't have a plan. The plan is, man, go watch some movies, go watch some TV shows, go listen to some music. Okay, but how is that helping me comprehend? I have no idea what they're talking about. It's because you've got to have that plan. You've got to develop the plan, right? And that can be your plan. Start out one topic a day, one theme a day. For seven days, a couple of weeks go by. Combine the two themes for seven days a week. A couple of weeks go by. Combine three things. Go up to 10. I'm listening for 10 things. And just, I guarantee you, if you do that on a 10 week basis or a 20 week basis, this fluency thing, this ability to be able to pick up things when you're listening is going to, it's going to accelerate that process. So the question I, I, I want to leave you with is, can we ever overcome this challenge of listening comprehension? Before we land this plane, right, we're talking about listening comprehension here. The question is, can we ever overcome the, 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 the challenge of listening comprehension? Absolutely, right? I've just given you a, a freebie right here. This is a free gym. Take that and do what you want to, right? Uh, but yes, that's a possibility. How do I do it? By repetition, right? This whole language learning, this whole Spanish, learning Spanish, repetition is key, right? If I want to improve my bench press max, I can't bench once every three months. Repetition is key, right? 
Do I do the same thing every day to get better at my listening comprehension? That's going to get monotonous, profe. You're absolutely right. I totally agree. It will get monotonous. So you got to make this thing creative, baby. Come up with some creative ways for you to improve your listening comprehension. The sky's the limit. It's, it's the wild, wild west out here for you to become fluent. Who said there's one way to become fluent? You do what works for you, okay? Do what works for you. And, and so as we land this plane, the last thing that I would say to you is this. The last thing that I would say to you is this. When you're talking about listening comprehension or we're talking about being able to jump off into being fluent in a particular language. How do I develop this process, right? What do I have to do to get fluent, okay? That's our question. What do I have to do? And the answer is be creative. When in doubt, create, create, create. Domestically immerse yourself. You're going to hear me always talk about that. Domestically immerse yourself in this language. Whatever you're doing, domestically immerse yourself so that you understand, hey, man, I want to be fluent, right? What's your motivation? Because if you want to be somebody that does, you know, remote work overseas or you want to be an expat or you, you want to take vacations into one of the 20 speaking, you know, 21 speaking uh, Spanish speaking countries, right? If you're like me, like my goal in life is to be able to have said that I've been to all 21 Spanish speaking countries, right? How are you going to do that? Right? How are you going to do that? How are you going to become fluent? Right? If that's your goal, how are you going to do, how are you going to become fluent on that? I say create, 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 create situations where, or put yourself in situations where you can create conversations. Okay. One create. Create activities for yourself to help you with listening comprehension. I gave you a gym today, right? Showed you a little quick method, a little strategy. That's number two. Create a game plan. Create a purpose. That's probably number one. What is your purpose for learning Spanish, right? Create that, that motto. What, what is it that is... You're, what's your creed, right? What What is it that you are going to tell people? I mean, why are you learning Spanish? What's that? What's your answer? What are you going to tell them? Create that. Start there at the top. That's where you want to do. And then everything else will trickle down, right? But create a reason. Know your why. What's your motivation? Okay. Develop your SMART goals. We talked about that. I did that at the beginning of the year. I'll drop that link in here. It helps you to create SMART goals, okay? Create smart goals. Time. Put a time frame on this thing. Man, I want to be fluent in Spanish by the end of 2023. It's possible. Definitely possible. Anything's possible. I want to be fluent by Thanksgiving. Possible. Is it practical? Depends on how hard you're going to paint. If you go hard to paint this thing, you can do it. Can I do it in a month? Absolutely, if you're overseas. Right? If you're in a Spanish-speaking country or you're in a Spanish-speaking community, if I lived in New York and in 86 I said I wanted to be fluent in Spanish, I bet you money in 87 I'd have been fluent if I lived in New York, if I lived in the city area of New York. If I lived in Miami, I would have been fluent in one year, max, as a kid. Well, probably shorter time frame. Cali, Los Angeles, Vegas, Arizona. There's no excuse. People make these excuses. Ah, oh, man, it's too hard, blah, blah, blah. It's only hard because you make it hard, right? It's only hard because you make it hard, baby. Nowadays, we have things like chat GPT, right? I did a video on that. If you haven't checked that out, chat B GPT, if you were saying, man, I live in, you know, the cornfields of Kansas. Not that saying things wrong with Kansas and the cornfields, but I'm just saying, right? If that is your situation, use chat GPT, unless you can't get like internet in the cornfield. I don't know. It could be a situation. It could be a possibility. But if that's not a possibility, if you can get Wi-Fi wherever you are, you have a connection to the internet, use chat GPT. I've got a video on shows you how to do that. I'll put that in the link 
in the description below, or I might just link that as the next one here. Learning how to use artificial intelligence to help you get there to where you want to go as far as domestically immersing yourself. Use that as your language partner if you can't find somebody in your community that actually is either fluent in Spanish or practicing or studying, right? Use these WhatsApp groups, right? Discords, they're out there. I'm creating the Discord. Uh, it's coming up. It's gonna, we're going to pop that thing off in July as well when we start doing these classes, these these uh, members only classes in January, uh, July, I'm sorry, July, 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 2023, July. Um, we're going to be doing members only classes. We're going to do those once a week. Once a week. Okay. We're going to be doing those things once a week. And man, it could, it could be an hour. It could be two hours. The benefit is going to be there for you all. All right. So we're going to be dropping those classes off. This is going to be a, a situation where, man, it's closed to just us. It's VIP only. Right. So, People don't have to be like, hey, man, you are you showing this to the world? No, this is us. This is private. Only you will have the link. So when we do these stream yard situations, I'll just pull you up, man. We can do some one on one practice. Right. That's my goal. This is how I'm going to help you become fluent. So when we start doing the members only stuff, that's the so I can reach people a lot faster. Right. We're going to be doing that. Of course, if you want to get into the game right now, you can hit me at Carolina Language Solutions dot com or you can just email me right here with info at speak Spanish dot speak Spanish now dot TV. Hit me on the email. OK, hit me on the email. I'll type that into the chat right now. If you are looking to get into some classes um, one on one with me. Check out hit me on the uh Email that is in the chat right there. I'll put it right here. Just email. Me. Hey man, I think I want to make this jump. I'm ready to make the jump. Won't you come? How they tell us in church? Won't you come? Now's the time, right? Won't you come? Okay. Make that commitment to yourself. It's June 2023, as of this live stream right now, June 17th, right? You want to? You got to come with the goal. You got to make the 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 claim. Claim it, right? You want to claim to be fluent by December. Won't you come? I can help you do that. Okay. In a one-on-one -on -one situation, absolutely. I can make it happen. I know I can. I've done it. I do this. Right? So if that is you, hit me on the email right there. All right? I will help you get to that point. If you nine months, a year, I got you. You know what I'm saying? We we I will help you develop your smart goals and then we'll move from there. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and land this plane. It's been a pleasure working with you today. Uh, we're going to continue to work on to give you some of these strategies. We're going to try to do this once a week. OK, once a week, it'll probably be, you know, Sabado. You know, I don't know. We'll figure out a day. I'll ask in the community post Blade Runner, uh, some of my 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 loyal and faithful people there that are in the community post uh make sure you uh xl pro some of these guys that show up have been here all the time make sure you hit me in the community post let me know email me. it's right there ladies and gentlemen email me. hey man do you think you can do classes on i'll put a poll out i'll put a poll out why not i just do that just make sure you hit the community post poll we'll drop that bad boy at 8 a.m on monday all right which will be what 19th juneteenth coming up happy juneteenth everybody out there uh by the way all right, shout out to Juneteenth. Uh, but so we'll drop that bad boy maybe like 9 a.m. This is a holiday, so you know what I'm saying? We'll drop it on around 9 a.m. And let me know, you know what I'm saying? What's what's your favorite day? What's your best day to do a live when we do these types of lives? When I give you the strategy lives, okay? We're talking about the strategy lives. Once you jump into the membership and we're doing the classes, that's going to be a set time. And I'll let everybody know in the membership group. Uh, we have not set that up, so it's coming. Be on the, be on the lookout for that. All right, I will definitely drop that in the community post and let you know when that's jumping off. But as we drop this poll on Monday, you know, when we do these strategy lives, what's the best day for you? What's the best time for you? OK, OK, we'll do that. But, damas y caballeros, muchísimas gracias. Thank you very much for showing up today. Check out some of the other videos. Check out this video. I'm going to tag to this one right here. This is probably going to be the video on developing your smart goals, right? How to set a plan for you to become fluent, okay? And I think that should be everybody's goal, right? That's coming in here. Hopefully, that's your goal. So I'm going to set this. I'm going to tag this video with that, and I will check you next time. Nos vemos.